Hi and welcome to this month's Creative Corner. Thank you for joining us live and if you're not watching us live, hello and welcome to the repeats. We are, of course, bringing you a set where I will build up an image from scratch all the way through to a finished image as I have done in the previous months. But as usual, there is a little bit of background decision work that has been made to get us to this stage. And so what I am going to do now is just talk to you a little bit about those decisions, what's brought us here today, and what's brought us to this set and the makeup and background, and also the props that I have chosen. Now, I talk a lot, and you can tell it's live because we might hear a little bit of background noise, so I apologize for that in advance. The, I've talked about this on previous lives where I've shown something that I've been inspired by. And I've talked about inspiration coming from other places like paintings or music or various inspirational things that you hear in your everyday life. And so what I'm going to show you right now is the image that um, I would like to use for our inspiration for this month. And this image came, I came across it on my Pinterest where I literally scroll through my Pinterest um, just to see what's there, what's uh, inspirational. And sometimes it will be um, Renaissance paintings because I kind of, those are kind of like where I draw inspiration from for still lives. Now this particular image I came across, it was in my scrollings for still lives. So this one I will, are we bringing it up for you? Okay, they might just have a few technical problems in bringing it up. So just bear with us as we show you that image in just a minute. So it's up now? Yes. Great, okay. So this is the image that I'm drawing inspiration from. Now, when I talk about drawing inspiration, I don't mean let's take this image and copy it. That's not what I'm talking about. In drawing it from inspiration, what I'm looking at in the images is specific things that I'm really enjoying in the image. And in this particular image, I drew from it, the set kind of dimensions were really beautiful, but mainly the light. The idea that there was this shaft of light, almost like a door being opened, and that this, you know, the light coming from the door was entering at the far end of the composition. And I really liked how that drew you further into the image. Now, I tried to build a set that kind of replicated the drawing in part. So you were very much drawn into the image and then had this light shaft at the end. Now, I've been through a few variants of this current set um, all have certain things in, in, in common and then other things I've changed. So the first thing I did was to lay the plank of wood in because that was the, the point of focus that was going to be the one that drew you into the image. Obviously the background at the end and this um, wall, if you like, the wall at um, that butts into the background at the end. These are the things that I've cycled through and I'm going to show you now some of my uh, thinking as I've cycled through these backgrounds. So if we can show the first one. Okay, so this, the first one that you're seeing on camera is actually this background here. Okay, I've left it on set because it just stabilizes the rest. So it's nothing more right now than stabilization. But this background I had, and I originally chose it because I thought it matched the color of the wood. Amongst, uh, and I think I've also got the other background. Let me just bring that one to set. And this is a baking tray. It's a simple baking tray that I had um, put alongside the plank of wood to show you kind of how that image was being built up. Now, the things that I liked about that was that the baking tray was dark, but to me, the background, although giving tons and tons of texture, 
it kind of felt like it was a too similar color to the plank of wood. And so we moved on to the next one. Can we show the next one? Okay, so this, by the way, is the same. Can you just go backwards and forwards between those two images? Okay, so this one is literally only with ambient light. And then the second one is with a spotlight and this very specific door uh, lighting that I want and I will talk to you about our setup for lighting in just a moment so I'm going to keep talking about the set for now but I'll come back to the actual lighting setup in just a minute so if we can keep going okay so that was me changing out this uh, baking tray for the slate mainly because the baking tray has a kind of um, lighter shade in the middle that I didn't really like. It didn't make sense in a wall setting um, in this type of environment. So I took that out and changed it for a slate. And that's all that is that's currently in set is a gray slate. Okay, if we can cycle through the next one. Okay, so that was a bigger slate. That's all that is. And the next one. Okay, so this I wanted to get a feel for how a different color background, perhaps a lighter color, and this yellow was way, way too aggressive. So that kind of came out. Let's try to see the next one. Okay, and then I moved on to the background and the set that we currently have, which is much more fitting because it appears far more like a wall, like a textured wall. And so for me, the textures and dimensions in this set already are really beautiful. And that's where I really wanted to start from in our images. So as you can see, the camera is already in place and you can see through the live image of the camera where that currently looks like. So it draws your eye very much into this area in the back, which is where I wanted this door light to appear. So I'm now going to talk to you about lighting. Now, as you know, in all of my previous lives, I've only used my one light, which has been this um, softbox. And I've used it on continuous lighting. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one is I actually prefer working with a continuous light because it enables me to see exactly what the camera sees, i.e. when I press the button, that is the image that's going to be seen in the back of my camera. The light is going to fall in the same way and you are going to see in the camera what you see on set. Now, I am going to be using some speed light or specifically a speed light today. And the reason for that is that I know a few of you have been asking on Instagram how to use a single speed light. A couple of you have recently purchased one speed light and would like to start using it in your work. And I'm here to tell you that a single speed light is a very powerful tool in your work and you can use it in a multiple different ways. And I'm going to show you one specific way of using it today. And the reason why it's very specific is because it's creating a very specific effect for me based on the inspiration that I have seen in my inspirational draw in picture. So that's kind of where we are. The speed light I am going to be using today, I think Philippe will be able to put link on the page for you to show you. It's a Yongnu um, uh, single um, speed light. It's controlled by my camera, as you can see here. On the top of my camera, I have a uh, controller for it. So literally, when I press um, the shutter on my camera, the speed light is fired by the camera and in this particular scenario I have set up the speed light to my left here I don't know you can just see it that's great and I've put on it a grid in front of it now the reason why I've put a grid on it here is a couple of reasons firstly we are shooting something that is very controlled I want it to be in a very specific place and the grid focuses the light in those in a specific area 
Without the grid, the flash goes off and it fires light everywhere and tends to bounce light around quite a lot. When you put a grid on a speed light, it very much focuses the light through the grid at the object that the grid is facing. And that allows um, the bounce light to be reduced and only be focused in the area that you're pointing it at. So that's the reason why I'm using the grid in this area. You are, of course, going to see the, the softbox being on and it's on in this live scenario because we need light for video and being able to show my face to you <laughs> throughout this process. But it's not something that is actually going to affect my image taking today. It's pretty much ambient lighting. Now, there's a couple of things here that I'd like to talk to you about in terms of your speed light. And let me just put the light back on. In terms of speed light and ambient lighting, what I'd like to do, is it still not coming up? Okay, let me just put that back up on screen. Okay, there we go. So what you're seeing now is literally through the camera lens and it's um, completely just ambient right now. If I press the um, shutter, you will see the flash going off. Oh, and again, it's directed straight at the set, okay, in that area. Now what creates that doorway, the kind of um, beautiful, very, very directional light into that area is something that we call a flag. If I just put my iPod down here, this flag is a very high tech piece of cardboard. Okay. And uh, it's not any particular size or shape. It's just a regular piece of cardboard that I've picked up that will literally flag off the light coming from the speed light onto my set. And so wherever I position this will mean that the light is blocked. So I also have on set here, I don't know if you can see that from, from your set, but I have a piece of board. Can we, is there that cable long enough to get to me? Probably not. Okay, so on set, I have a piece of board here um, and this is a set and this is where you, the camera can't see but it does allow me to, when I put the cardboard in as a block, it literally guides me as to where that piece of cardboard needs to go. So it's just a guide so that I know to return the piece of cardboard always to the same place to take the image in exactly the way. Now I could, of course, stand this piece of cardboard up and just um, keep it there, um, you know, with a stand or have it propped up with something and that's that would be perfectly fine but because I'm going to be working on the set um, I want to be able to take it down just for now work on the set and then put it back in in exactly the same place so I've just put myself a little guide to know where it is once I've set up the set of course I can prop this up um, and place it and fix it in place okay can I give you this overhead camera thank you okay so when I take the image with the piece of cardboard in place, it blocks off the light from the speed light back here and produces that nice little doorway. And let me just show you what that looks like. So there we are. Actually, I've, I must have moved the camera at some point because I can see the line of the cardboard in, in the set. So that way, it does give you that beautiful line of the doorway. And depending on how far in I want that doorway will depend how far I move the cardboard in or out of the set. So that pretty much brings us to where we are and how we've come to be in this setup today. So the next thing I'm going to do is to show you some of the props and the choices behind the props and what we're actually going to photograph. Now, my inspiration from this came from 
my good friend um, Oscar, who is currently actually starting harvest right now. It's harvest time in Porto, uh, in Portugal. So all of the grapes are now being harvested for this year's wine. So I thought what a great time to actually take a photo of some grapes and kind of mark this season in, in the year. So I have some nationally sourced grapes and of course because of that I thought what other things, other components can go alongside it. So I'm going to show you some of the props I've pulled. So if we go over here, um, great. So I have here literally a beautiful um, big bowl of grapes which we will be using. I also have some um, national figs. They are chosen mainly because the colors will match and will be a deep golden. I have a couple of other things here. Seasonally we have squashes and melons. So I've picked a good variety of things that will go together and of course um, some nuts as well. They're kind of things that you will normally see in a still life um, kind of image that will go beautifully together. So I kind of picked a selection of things here alongside which I picked some glassware and some containers that I thought may be pretty for this. Um, so we're going to test out and see what works. So if we go back to the set, the first thing I'm going to do is start putting things on set that I think make kind of sense to the grapes. We're going to start with the grapes and we're going to kind of have that in mind as I build up this image. So. The first things I've pulled out here is a little bottle and a glass. That kind of makes sense, right? You're drinking wine, there'd be a bottle of wine and a, and a glass. So these are things I'm going to place in my set to start with. So perhaps I put the bottle in the back here. I don't want the label showing, so I'm just going to put it just to the side so you can't really read the label. I'm not going to take the label off. I'm not going to be that kind of... Um, precious about it but I don't really want to read the label and I'm going to have the glass perhaps perhaps there okay so it's not really touching but what I am hoping for is some beautiful reflections coming off them because the light is coming from this direction I know that the shadows cast by the glasses are going to land on this here and I'm going to show you that right now and this is the good and bad thing about using speed lights. The bad thing is you can't automatically see what the camera's going to see. But the magic of it when you press the shutter is that you get this. And you can see these beautiful, um, oh, look at that. And I, I love how it's caught um, the glass there. And it's kind of shimmied all the way up here. I and mean, that's just, that's really really pretty already and I love how that is and what I might do is I might move the cardboard back just slightly here so that the doorway is a little bit bigger let me just see what that would look like so okay the doorway is just a little bit bigger there we go and there's just a little bit more of a light patch in between the glass and the doorway that that will appear okay so I love how this is working to start with. So now I'm going to start putting the, the grapes on my set and I'm going to start building it up that way. Um, and I'm going to perhaps write the framing. I'm just looking at the framing and I'm just wondering perhaps if the shelf doesn't look a little bit as if it's falling over. So I'm just going to correct that and perhaps just a little bit in like that. How's that? Were we good with that? I think I think that looks a bit better. Okay, so if I wanted to get a little bit more of the set in, we could do perhaps just there. Okay, and um, we're straightened up there. How's that? It's still a little bit over. Okay, so just a tiny bit. Of course these are sorts of things that we can always crop later in post but if we can get the the framing at least right right now we're good. Okay so 
so that's where we're building up from to start with. I am worried right now whether or not the glass, the, the height of the glass here versus the height there may be too similar. I may have to turn the um, slate, the, the uh, tile the other way. So let me just try that. It may not work, it may be too high this way so let's see and what do we think it might be too high then but let's see it may not be exactly that it's certainly a different feeling but what it might give us is just a little bit more height from the top of the glass rather than being a tangent with the glass top there so let me try that and let's see how we work with it. I may decide that I don't like it and I'll change it as we go, but that's okay. That's the thing is there's nothing right or wrong about building this up. It's really about your own aesthetic, deeply noticing what's going on. And as you notice things that you don't like or that you like, kind of adjust them, but kind of have your reason for why you're doing it. And everything that you're doing will be then based on the motivations going forward. So the next up is our grapes. So let's put the grapes in. Now, I have some beautiful leaves that I kept to one side. And I'm not sure that I'm going to be using this in particular here. So we're just going to put those over, put those back on here just for a second. And... Let's see what we have. So we have a little bundle. And the other thing, I would normally perhaps hang some of these or do something really beautiful there. But my problem is, is that I really liked and enjoyed the reflections on the glass. So I'm not necessarily wanting to put anything in the way of the reflection here. I still want to see the reflection of the glass. So I'm kind of now balancing what I saw with the reflection versus what the grapes are going to do to that reflection when I put them in. So it's that kind of mental um, visual thinking that we're doing here. I could always put this little grape here and so if I'm going to hang anything, it might be that I hang it there. So let me, let me put that just to one side with that little great pile there. And these, of course, are all really big. I mean, that's just such a beautiful bunch, isn't it? Um, but let's work with a smaller, a smaller bunch for now. Like I think... If I put something in there, can I get away with how that might work for us? I love the fact that it will hang over. Can you see that? So I mix, I'm really. In, in placing it, what I'm thinking is I'm trying to exploit the fact that we can get this lovely overhang from the shelf and you can still see underneath it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that image again so that I'm again reminded where the reflections lie and also to see what the reflections do with that, um, with the grapes already in. And... I'm going to put it on a timer because, oh, and I did it again. I'm not sure I mind that. Let me just, I knocked the frame in there, but we'll see how that. I think perhaps, there we go. Okay, so. Let me just make sure I'm focused right. Let's put the cardboard up. I'm going to hit my shutter, but I'm also going to just see what this might do in the corner, just for fun. 
Okay, that's going to be really dark there. Can you see that? And then we lose the beautiful kind of reflections that come in. So that definitely doesn't work for me. That's something that I won't do. And as you will know from my previous Instagrams, I do like to put something at the beginning of the lens or in front of the lens to kind of give some depth cues in. But in this case, when I do that, because the light is blocked off, it's completely dark. And so I lose all of the beautiful grape kind of feel about it. So for me, that just isn't going to work. It isn't something that I'm going to use. So instead of the grapes, what I might do is I might find some vines. I know I have in the box, <laughs> in my box of goodies, I know I've got some vine shapes. So I might try and find those later just for the branch type feel. But the grapes were way too heavy in the beginning here. So I'm not going to use that. But what I do enjoy very much is the overhang of the grapes. I really enjoyed that and I love the reflection still. So, so far, so good. I will decide later whether or not we're gonna have something in the bottle. I will probably put some tiny bit of squished juice or something in the bottom just to kind of say that there was something in the bottle at some point in time. So now I'm now gonna build up perhaps a few little grapes around it. Let me just take this one away. I'm going to put some loose grapes in and perhaps we I just bring it onto the set so that you can see um, what I'm looking at here. Perhaps here we go. Some of these have already. I'm going to take it off the big one. So some of these already look really good. Perhaps we have and added a few in here. Yep, that, see how that already looks good on that? I'm looking for something just to go here and I will probably get a few little ones like just even like that looks great. So it looks like it was part of it and just kind of like having even a few in the back there would, would be great okay so that is really really pretty and what i'm going to do now is to take a look at perhaps either putting some figs in let me just see how that looks in just a second i'm just moving things off the set so that they don't get in the way but I was talking about my vines so <laughs> let me show you my box of kept goodies um, I'm not sure if Philip can show the overhead camera here okay so this is my box of goodies and what I'm going to do is perhaps pick out some of these twiddly shapes see that that's a beauty so I might pick something like that or these ones all of the beautiful shapes um, so let me just pull out a few onto the lid so that you can see what it is I'm talking about so if you take a look at this side you can see the shapes that I'm pulling out so I'm really looking for something that will enhance the vines that makes sense to go into an image with grapes and vines. Okay, so now I've pulled those out. I'm gonna see what they look like in my set. So let me start with some of the big ones. So we could probably have like something hanging there um, and perhaps even oh my microphone has come out so we could probably have things that are like hanging over the top there or even 
adding into the set here. I really like how that builds up and perhaps even like just a little bit down here as well so that it looks and even on the top of that. That's quite cute, isn't it? Okay, so I'm really happy with how this is being built up. The thing that I'm looking at right now that I might want is perhaps something a little bit in this place. Now I'm gonna take a photo now where it's been built up so that I can see exactly where I might position perhaps a fig. That's kind of where my mind is going right now. So I'm gonna take another image and I'm gonna put this piece of cardboard in place that will be the door and of course I've got it on a timer right now so that I can make sure that I've got everything in place before the image gets taken and then the image comes up and it oh look at that I, I like that and I know that if I place anything here in the dark it's not going to catch the light but I'm not sure that I mind that because of course right now what I'm loving is the reflections of the glass and the bottle, and I don't want to disturb that, but I do want something a little bit perhaps here. Now, I know that a fig, let, in fact, let me show you. I know that I've got these figs. I'll come back and show you the overhead of when I cut them. But these figs right now, they are also really, really dark. So I know that they're going to appear incredibly dark if I just leave them hole in the set but I kind of want to just place some nail just to get an idea let me just put you back in a live view scenario okay so I want to get just an idea of how this might look so if I were to put something perhaps there I'm just going to cycle back to the image that I just took because of course I want to see where the beautiful reflections start coming in and it's probably going to come in exactly where I've just put that plot, that fig. So I don't want to interrupt those. So what I might have to do is just shimmy the bottle down a little bit, perhaps even move the glass just a tiny bit. Of course, I could always move the door so that's also an option. I could move the door or the cardboard just back a little bit towards the camera and that would give me a little bit more um, window here. But the problem is, is I really like where the light is falling directly here. So I'm going to perhaps just move them just a little bit here. And in order to make sure that I've got the place right, I'm going to take another photo. Put the door in place. Okay, making sure that it's not in view of the camera. But it's, there we go. Okay, and can you see how dark they're coming up now? And that was my, a little bit of my fear of what was gonna happen because we'd already seen it with the grapes coming over. And so what we had had to do with the grapes is we'd had to take the grapes away from being hanging over here and we'd had to put something finer with more definition in at the front to make sure that we could see what it was without needing to actually see the details of it. Now, my figs are pretty similar to the grapes. They're a bit bigger. And of course, in the shadows, they come up very dark. Now, in order to get around this, what I'm going to try and do is to cut the fig in half and what I'm hoping is that the inside being a little bit more colorful and brighter it will help draw that out and it won't matter so much that it's in the shadow so let's give that a go I'm going to take this small one at the front and I'm going to cut it in half so we're going to take it to my set here and let me just put the others on the floor okay so I have here a little cutting board and I'm not doing this on set because obviously you don't really want to be cutting anything on your set and look at that inside is a bit of yellow and a bit of red so I'm hoping that putting this on the set 
will bring up a little bit more than just the outer darkness. So let's see, I'm just gonna bring both of these onto my set and I'm going to pop one here. Okay, and I'm not sure if I'm going to We'll, we'll see about the other one because I don't, again, I'm conscious that it may interfere with the, um, with the reflections going that way. So I'm going to see how that works for us. Again, placing the door or my piece of cardboard as now lovingly referred as the door in place. I'm going to click my shutter, which is on a timer, just so that I can make sure that everything's in place. That goes off and yes, that's pretty great. It does, I think the only thing that kind of doesn't work for me is this fig back here because it's still a little bit big. So I'm gonna try and find a smaller fig um, and a smaller size, smaller height, just to perhaps um, see. There we go, let's see if this one, this one may work. And this one has a little bit of color here rather than just the black. So let's see if this will work for us. Again, knowing what it is, identifying the problem or identifying the thing that you aren't liking in your image is already well above halfway there to fixing it. Once you can identify exactly what it is you don't like about the image and then working out what it is you would need to do to fix it. In this case, it was a height thing because it was hiding the beautiful reflection we were getting off the glass behind it. And so what I'm hoping is by reducing the height of a fig, by choosing another fig, and the fig that I just chose also had a little bit of lightness on the outside of the skin, which I've turned to the camera. What I'm hoping is that will do two things for the price of one. Firstly, allow me to see more of the reflections behind and also to stop that fig being so dark as to be lost entirely in the image. So let's take these figs out. By the way, because we are live, you can ask me any questions you like. So if you have any questions out there, please feel free to drop them in the comments and let us know. And I will set the door up again, my piece of cardboard. I will take that image and have it. There we go. Ah. Oh. Yes, I'm loving that. I think the other thing that perhaps could be better is this fig here, just perhaps needs to be, I might need a tiny, it needs to be propped up from behind. So, oh, I'm sorry, can you, is that, okay, the feed went off for a second. What I might do is it might need to be propped up behind. I have another little squirrely branch of a vine, and what I might do is just prop that up behind it to help A, prop it up, and B, kind of tie in the fig to the grape. So it's, again, double duty. Let me just come back to the live view. Okay, so I'm really enjoying that, and my grapes are still glistening because I had kept them in the fridge. At this point, I might um, just water them or just stroke them with a paintbrush, but they are actually already shiny, so I don't need to do that. If your grapes aren't so shiny, there's a trick is just squash one grape up and dip your paintbrush into the grape and then paint them. And I might have to do that if we were here for a while um, and they stop being so shiny, but currently, like this one in the glass, I definitely would do that in that one. Okay. I think that the only thing really that I don't like about this image is the fact that that glass at the end um, hasn't got anything in it. 
this, this bottle, sorry, not the glass. And so what I might do is I might put a couple of pieces of, um, I might smush a, gra a grape or two and put the liquid into the bottom just for a little colouring on the bottom. So everything else though I really enjoy and actually the simplicity of this image makes it quite a powerful image in itself. Um, I'm just going to check in, is there any questions? No, we're good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to leave it here. I know that it's a super simple image in comparison to the still lives we've previously done, but this is actually a really powerful statement. It has the reflections, it has the authenticity of a door being opened and you walking into the set. And so what I suggest is if you have a set set up similar to this or something that you really enjoy, once you've taken this image, you might play with the set itself, put some other things into it and make it a full series. So we might swap out the grapes and the fig for our melon or the butternut squash. And again, you can build up a series from the same set that you've already built. Because this set, although it's not overly complicated, it's still a set that's taken a bit of time to build up and with purpose. And so having a set of images that are in the same set, but with different things in it, is how you can build up a series of photos that make a really great looking portfolio. So I hope that you found some of this to be useful. And of course, please, if you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments below and I'll either answer them in Instagram or I'll answer them in our next month on Creative Corner. So thank you ever so much for coming along and I hope that you've enjoyed it.